There we go. Now, um, we've got the Jumping Dinosaur program in Chapter 7 open on page. You need to go to page, what is it, uh, 197. Now, the thing is, there are a couple of properties of the dinosaur, of any object on the form. And if you go to, if you click on the dinosaur and we go to our property, uh, there, we click on the dinosaur image, that image will be moving. The image has a picture loaded into it. So you have a picture property where that picture was loaded, okay? You can actually change the picture so that it looks like it's moving but in a certain time, but we're not doing that now with this one. But another property of these components is that you have a left property. That means how far from the left of the form is the dinosaur. You know, how, how many micro millimeters, whatever they call it, from the, from the left. Then you also have a top property, which is how far from the top of the form is the um, picture or the object. So when they talk about the top, they're talking about that border just below the title, you know, in, inside the blue area there, the edge of that blue border. Client height and client width is that area in which we are um, working, that dotted area, but then you have the height and the width of the form itself, which includes the, let's see, look there, client height and client, if the client width is 624, and the width, well, 640, let's see, client width is 624, so, yeah, the 640, the width, is the actual whole, the whole um, form itself, okay? But the client width, it's important to know these things, what client width is, is where, is how, what is the width from the top to bottom of the dotted area in which this dinosaur can move. So when we jump, we don't want it to jump up to the blue area of the form. So there you have those things that you need to be aware of, the top and the height, and then you also have a top and the left, sorry, and then the actual dinosaur itself has a width and a height as well. It, it has a size which is width and height, and those are the, 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 the items you're going to play with here. So let's have a look at our code. So we're going to move the left. All right, so we have got here, in the user, in this user interface, the timer has an interval of 10, while the height and width of items are given in the table below. The form is 200, which is the actual size of the form, 200 um, height, and actually client height, sorry, client height. Wait, it's not. Height 200, width 640. We actually have to change that width. I actually changed my height. Why? Because I wanted to see the dinosaur picture better. So we change our height back to 200. Not the client height, just the height. Fine. The dinosaur is 100 height and 88 width. There it is, 100 height. This is what you're playing with when you do movement of items on the screen. The cactus is 60 and 46. And that's right, I'm just double checking all of these numbers. 60, 46, there. Then we have variables that are declared. I jump speed, okay? So we go and make sure we've got I jump speed over here. And there they declared it and set it to zero at the same time. So that's fine, you can do that, or you can go and set it to zero in on activate event, or you can safely trust that global integer variables will be initialized to zero before you use them anyway. And then we have a variable, R speed, 
was given six in our on time on click event and or on time event and the drop speed equals one and in the on time event decrease the left property of the cactus to the value of our speed so we're going to go to the on timer event in the on time event the left property must be decreased by our speed so let's go to our on timer event so we click on timer go to events double click inside there and then we say the cactus IMG cactus left equals IMG cactus dot left. Sorry. Are we subtracting dot left minus our speed? What is that actually going to do? Oops. Edit undo. You forgot. Uh, don't forget you got an edit undo button up there. It says edit and undo. Are you with us? I'm not sure if you're with us. Right. Um, This code allows the cactus to repeatedly appear from the right of the window by moving your cactus to the right of the window once it disappears from the left. Your dot left property. Basically, when we de we're decreasing the left property of the cactus. If I click on cactus, and we have a left property over here, in other words, how many units from the left of this form is it situated? It's 490 from the left. And we're decreasing it by 6 for each time. So that means it's going to move to the left. But it's going to continue doing that. And if it gets too, too far, in other words... It's less than or equal to minus 48. Now, what does that minus 48 mean? If your left property is minus 48, that means you're off the grid, you're off the form. Let's click on that and see that our, our width of our form is 640. So 640 minus 490, what do we get? 640 minus 490. So, uh, I have to go and do it on the calculator. Guys, if you ever get stuck in an exam, just open Excel. It's easy peasy. You can, and you don't have a calculator on you, please do this in an exam. It's so much easier. Equals 640 minus 490. Okay, 150. Anyway, so you subtract 6, subtract 6, they came up with a number, minus 48, it must obviously be to do with subtracting 6 until we get a negative number, but we will see what it does. Let's write the code in, in fact, I'm going to copy and paste it in, into our on timer on click event. So this cactus is going to be moving, and then it'll appear in its original place if it gets off the screen. And what we can do is run the program and see what happens once we've got this code in. Yes, we are going to follow the um, thing. When, it, when they say it appears from the right... It's going to go to the left and then appear again in its original place. So let's go and see the cactus doing that when we run our code. And remember, this is all done in the on time event. I wonder if it works. Let's see. <coughs> all right certainly going a bit fast, isn't it? 
Right. So the reason why it's going so fast, the timer has an interval of 10. If you change that interval to a larger number, then it will go slower, okay? So basically, we're moving this thing. When it gets to a negative number, we go back to its original place, and then it moves again. All right, what do we have to do next? That poor dinosaur is going to jump pretty quickly, doesn't it? On, because the cactus is pretty sharp. In the on time event, decrease the top property of the dinosaur by the value of I jump speed. But right, we'll just do what they tell us to do. I'm copying and pasting. In the on time event, there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, what is I jump speed? Subtract. Now, we don't remember. I jump, speed I jump speed starts with the value of naught. Does it? Where's I jump speed? It's a global variable, I'm assuming. Yes, it is there. Um, it didn't like us. It didn't like me copying and pasting. That's all. Right, it didn't like me copying and pasting. That's all it didn't like. Fine. What's going to happen now? So the dinosaur is not going to change if our jump speed is naught. Not so. But as soon as our jump speed has a positive value, this line will cause the dinosaur to move upwards. If it has a negative value, the dinosaur will drop down. So our jump speed must be either positive or negative. And we have an on-click event for the jump button where we're going to get, we're going to be controlling our jump speed somehow. So our jump speed, because we su we're subtracting our jump speed from the top. Can you see this top here? What does the top mean? How many, how many measurements from the top of the form? So if the top is, at this point it is, um, 65, and we subtract 2 from it, that means it'll be 63, and then it's going to move up, you see? As, the, as we subtract our jump speed, if it's naught, then this thing's not going to change. The top value won't, won't change. The dinosaur will stay put. So in our button click event, we can have some control of our jump speed. Jump button. Set the value of our jump speed to 14. Right, double click jump. Say our jump speed. Colon equals 1.4. I'm assuming that will be high enough to get over the cactus. If we look at the size of the cactus, the height of the cactus is uh -oh, 46 by 60. He's got a. But you see, oh, he's going to go up 14. The top. Oh, it's going to go higher. That'll be fine. It's quite a lot of um, geometry here that you have to worry about. Um, what? This value is negative. Well, well, it will go negative. Right. So now... So we know that our jump speed is going to be, uh, we're going to subtract. Oh, we'll have to carry on with it next time. <laughs>